That concludes the debate on a fairer Scotland delivering race equality. It is now time to move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 9128 in the name of Alison Harris on the final stage of the Writers to the Signet Dependence Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill. However, before the debate begins, uh, the presiding officer is required under standing orders to decide whether or not, in his view, any provision of the bill relates to a protected subject matter. Put briefly, that is, whether it modifies the electoral system and franchise for Scottish parliamentary elections. If it does, the motion to pass the bill requires support from a supermajority of members, that is, a two-thirds majority of all members, which is 86. In the case of this bill, the presiding officer has decided that, in his view, no provision of the writers to the Signet Dependence Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill relates to a protected subject matter. Therefore, the bill does not require a supermajority to be passed at stage three. I therefore call on Alison Harris to speak to and move the motion on behalf of the Bill Committee for up to four minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am delighted to be opening this final stage debate for the Writers to the Signet Dependence Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill. At this point, I would like to thank my colleagues, Mary Fee and Tom Arthur, for all their input during the various stages of the bill and also the committee clerks. Historically, the WS Society looked after writers to the Signet and their widows by making ad hoc charitable donations. The fund was formalised by private legislation in 1803 which provided for the payment of annuities to WS Society members' widows. This legislation was subsequently updated, most recently by the Writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Order Confirmation Act 1982, which sets out the current legislative framework. The 1982 Act provided for the change of name from the Widows' Funds to Dependents Annuity Fund, in recognition of the fact that women were then admitted to the WS Society, and the fund was opened up to orphans. More recently, the fund regulations were updated to cover the civil partners of contributors to the fund. The bill was introduced as a private bill to the Scottish Parliament on the 18th of May 2017, and the Writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill Committee was established, to consider the bill during its passage through Parliament. Private bills are bills which impact primarily on private interests, that is, specific groups or individuals. These differ from public bills which have a broader and wider effect on society. For this reason, the private bill process is very much focused on giving those whose interests might be engaged by a private bill the opportunity to make representations to the Parliament or object to the Bill. The objection period for the Bill ran until the 18th of July 2017 and no objections were received. The Committee did not receive any written evidence either. The current value of the Fund is approximately £55 million, and the value of each annuity is £8,400. The fund was closed to new members in 1989 and there are currently 141 beneficiaries to the fund. They are known as annuitants, with possibly up to 500 potential annuitants with an expectation the fund will continue paying annuities into the 2040s. The bill has two objectives relating to updating the 1982 Act. First, Section 1.1 seeks to update the definition of an actuary. This is a minor technical change which follows the merger of the two professional actuarial bodies. Second, Section 1.2 seeks to remove the requirement for the collector to be a contributor to the fund and places a new requirement for the collector to be an individual. The bill does not otherwise affect the role or functions of the collector. This second objective will widen the pool of people eligible to be elected as collector and ensure the contributors have the opportunity to elect someone with relevant experience and expertise. The committee considered the bill's objectives during the first or preliminary stage of the bill's scrutiny and agreed with the general principles of the bill. The committee remains content that the bill is necessary and worthwhile. 
As a result, Deputy Presiding Officer, I am pleased to move the motion in my name that the Parliament agrees that the Writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill be passed. Thank you. I now call Mary Fee. Two minutes would be appreciated, Ms Fee. I'll do my very best, Presiding Officer. Thank you. Like all committees considering legislation, it's the role of a private bill committee to consider the general principles of the bill at first, at, or the preliminary stage, and any amendments to the bill... Excuse me, Ms. Ms. Fee. Could I ask everyone to please be quiet? This is a very important piece of legislation. Thank you. Thank Ms. you, Deputy Fee. Presiding Officer, or consideration stage. At preliminary stage, the committee took evidence from the promoters of the bill. In relation to section 1.1 of the bill, definition of an actuary, the committee discussed the updated definition and the promoters confirmed that the definition was being updated in light of the 2011 merger of the Faculty of Actuaries in Scotland and the Institute of Actuaries. The promoters considered that the update was not strictly necessary as a court would take a pragmatic and sensible approach should statutory interpretation be required but that the update was proposed for the avoidance of doubt and the committee was content with this explanation. At consideration stage, the promoters sought to further future-proof the definition of an actuary by way of an amendment in response to further changes that might be made by the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. We were satisfied with the promoter's explanation and agreed to this amendment. In relation to section 1-2 of the bill defining who is eligible to be a collector, the committee agreed that the future administration of the fund required a change to the 1982 Act, given the diminishing pool of contributors that Alison Harris has referred to. The committee explored a number of issues in order to satisfy itself that the proposed amendment to the 1982 Act was the best solution to this problem. The promoters confirmed that reopening the fund to new contributors was not an option. They argued the reasons for closing the fund in 1989, namely that changes to the tax regime had made the fund a tax inefficient way of saving were still valid. The committee explored the reasons for the requirement that the contributor must be an individual rather than a company, a limited liability partnership or an unincorporated association. The promoters explained that this provision had been prompted by feedback from the contributors themselves who were quite clear that they wanted an individual in the role, although they recognised that a number of the functions required the support of their professional firm or professional organisation. The promoters highlighted that all the fund's contributors in living memory had been supported by their own solicitor's firm. The committee noted that this would be a matter for the trustees of the fund when advertising the role of contributor. This process is not covered by the 1982 Act and does not therefore need to be set out in this bill. The committee was content with these explanations and agreed that the new provision relating to the collector was the most sensible solution. The committee also asked the promoters about the future administration of the fund and particularly the trustees' expectations for how it will be managed as the pool of contributors further diminishes. As the com contributors elect the trustees and collector each year, their diminishing number will ultimately impact on the administration of the fund. The promoters envisage that, at some point, the fund will be converted to cash and the cash used to produce annuities for the remaining annuitants. At this point, the fund, would, the fund would effectively be wound up. The committee agrees that this strategy seems the most appropriate way forward. On the basis of the promoter's evidence, the committee agreed with the general principles of the bill, and that remains our view, and accordingly, I am happy to support the motion for the bill to be passed. Thank you. And I call on Tom Arthur to wind up. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I just want to put on the record my thanks to the clerks and the researchers for all their support, and to my colleagues Alice Allison Harris and Mary Fee. As my colleagues on the writers to the Signet Society Dependents Fund Bill Committee have spoken about in their consideration of and full support for this fund I, uh, bill, I would like to use this opportunity to provide some of the broader context of the private bills the Parliament has considered so far this session very briefly. Alison Harris, Mary Fee and myself have sat as members of the three private bill committees constituted by the Parliamentary Bureau to consider the three private bills introduced 
introduced so far this session. The others are the Edinburgh Baker's Widows Fund Bill and the Powell and Shaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill committees. I have acted as convener on both of these two committees. Uh, the Edinburgh Baker's Widows Fund was introduced on 20 March this year and sought to transfer the property and assets of the Edinburgh Baker's Widows Fund to a modern non statutory tra char charitable trust which would support education and training opportunities in baking. The committee supported the bill, which received no objections and was amended at consideration stage. The bill was passed by Parliament on the 21st November. The Powell and Shaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill was introduced slightly earlier on 17 March this year and is seeking to make various changes to the Power and Shaftery Drainage Commission. This is a more complex bill and is taking longer as uh, three objections have been lodged and so final stage won't be reached until the spring of next year. You have not seen the last of us yet, presiding officer. The third private bill introduced this session. The bill, the writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill was introduced on 18th of July. As Mary Fee explained, no amendments were lodged in respect to this bill and one amendment of very, uh, no objections rather were lodged in respect to this bill and one amendment of a very minor and technical nature was agreed at consideration stage. Uh, with that in mind, in conclusion, presiding officer, I agree with my bill committee colleagues and I am content that effective scrutiny has been done in the present case and that the bill therefore deserves the Parliament's support. On that basis, I am happy to support the motion for the bill to be passed. All in one breath. That concludes the final stage of the Writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Amendment. We turn now to decision time. There are four questions. The first question is that Amendment 9529.1 in the name of Annie Wells, which seeks to amend Motion 9529 in the name of Angela Constance on a fairer Scotland delivering race equality be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next question is that Amendment 9529.3 in the name of Polly McNeill, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Angela Constance be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the next question is that motion 9529 in the name of Angela Constance as amended be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Now the final question is that motion 9128 in the name of Alison Harris on the final stage of the Writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill be agreed. And because this is a final stage we have to have a division. So members may cast their votes now. And the result of the vote on motion 9128 in the name of Alison Harris is yes, 105, against, zero, abstain, zero. The motion is therefore agreed and the writers to the Signet Dependents Annuity Fund Amendment Scotland Bill is passed. That concludes decision time and I'll close this meeting.